In this tutorial, we're going to create a to-do icon, um, similar to something you might see for an organizer app or some other kind of program. And we're going to use the written instructions, which you have hopefully already opened, so you can follow along both with the written instructions and this video. You're going to need that for some of the color combinations. So to get started, we need to start a new document, so File, New. And a recommended size here, you should be on uh, web, but then a recommended size is 800 by 800 pixels. This is going to be a square icon, so any size square artboard is going to fit your artwork the best. And we're going to begin by creating um, the background for our icon, and we're going to use the rectangle tool. And we want to draw a perfect square, and to do that, um, hold down shift as you drag with the rectangle tool, and you will create a perfect square. I'm going to leave a little room outside my square. Um, I could fill the artboard, but I want to leave a little space for some of the items we're going to be adding in a minute. And once you have your square there, we're going to add some color to it. So with your gradient panel, um, we can start adding colors. And they recommend adding a tan and a darker tan, and there are specific colors for those. So if you double click on a color, you can pick you know, something that's close to it, a light tan. But then if you want to further um, adjust that color, you can go to this palette icon, and you can type in the exact, um, this is called a hex code, and you can type in the exact color combination that they recommend. This is how colors are defined on the web, and so it's often an easy way to get a specific color that you're looking for. In this case, the hex code for the first light tan is E3C, one eight four. And then if you click anywhere you'll see it adjust and now we have that light tan in place. We're going to do the same thing for the darker tan. If we go here we can pick one that's pretty close um, but then we can adjust it further with the hex code and here they suggest C9A068. And now we have our specific colors. We also want this to be a radial gradient um, and we are going to drag that into our square to apply it. Whoops. There we go. We want to make sure it's on the fill, not on the stroke. And for the stroke, we actually don't want one, so we can change the stroke to none. One thing to check here on your gradient is that uh, the center is the lighter color. You can sort of see that if you toggle back and forth. Now the darker color is in the center. Um, this button switches between them, reverses the gradient. We want the lighter color in the center so it looks like it glows. Now we want to add some rounded corners to our square. And if you are working in um, Illustrator CC, Creative Cloud, the most recent version, you'll be able to find these little um, dots in the corners of your shape and you'll be able to use the direct selection tool, the white arrow, to pull in on those and that will give you a rounded corners effect. I'm working in CS6, which doesn't have that effect, but that's okay because there are multiple ways to do this. So another way we can do it is going to um, Effect, Stylize, Round Corners, which we've done before, um, Preview something that looks about right, maybe I'll make those a little bit rounder, and then we can say okay. And now we have a nice uh, rounded square for our app background. Now we're going to start adding lines so we can make this um, have a little bit more texture to the background. So use your line segment tool and we're going to draw a line straight down from the top to the bottom and the best way to get a straight line is to hold down shift while you draw a line. In this line they don't give you a specific color, they just say to use a light tan. Um, so we could use our exact same one, otherwise the one that's default in your palette is probably fine. We want to make sure that this is on the, the stroke, not the fill, because otherwise it won't show up since it's a line. And they recommend using a stroke weight of at least two points. I'm going to make mine three so that it shows up a little bit better. Right now it barely shows up at all because we're putting it on a square that's pretty much the same color. So we're going to add an overlay effect over here under the transparency pane and we're going to change the blend mode from normal to screen. And now it creates a lighter effect so that we can see that, that line segment. We're going to do this again with another color, so right next to the other one, um, do the same, do another line. And if you have your uh, guides turned on, it will kind of snap into place. This one we want it to be right next to it, um, 
And this one we want to be a darker tan, so we can choose um, the darker tan on our palette. And this one, rather than using um, a screen mode, we're going to use the blend mode of multiply, so that will give it a darker effect. We can zoom in to make sure that those lines are actually right next to each other. You might want to use your arrow keys to adjust them slightly so that they are right next to each other. One good keyboard shortcut is um, you can zoom back out by hitting control and zero. Now we're going to group these two lines. You can highlight them by dragging around them or by clicking on them while holding shift. And we're going to go ahead and group them. Now they will act as one object and we want to copy these. We want to eventually have six copies on across this. So one way to copy them is by going to edit, copy, and paste. But you guys should also know um, that you can also copy items at this point by holding down either Alt on Windows or Option on Mac while you drag. And if you also hold down Shift, you'll drag them in exactly the, the same plane so they stay straight. One more. We want to have six of these. So you can space these out um, on your own by eye, but another way you can do it is to get the two on the end sort of where you want them, and then you can space out all the ones in between by highlighting them. Make sure that your uh, shape is not highlighted, just your lines. And then using the horizontal distribute center tool that appears, and that will distribute them exactly evenly across your artboard. Now we're ready to create the notepad shape. So to start this, we're going to create a rounded rectangle. And you could do this either the ways we did earlier, um, either by pulling in the corners or using the rounded corners effect. Um, we can also go up here and use the rounded rectangle tool, which is what the tutorial suggests. So we can go ahead and do that. And one thing about the rounded rectangle tool is that the corners may not be exactly the size you want. Um, and one way you can adjust that is using the tool. You can click anywhere. And then you can actually put in um, what kind of corner radius you want to have. And you might have to play around with this a little bit to get what you want. I'm going to try 40 and see how that looks. And that looks about right. So now if I delete that shape, those settings have saved, and I can now draw a rectangle that will have those same, same corners. So the shape you're drawing here should be a little bit longer than it is wide, but it's actually pretty close to a square, and it should fill a little more than half of your icon, but not not the whole thing. And if you don't get it the right size immediately, you can use the direct selection tool or the transform to make it larger or smaller by holding down shift. I like that size pretty well. So the next thing we're going to do is rotate it 15 degrees. You can use your uh, your rotate tool to do that. Um, you can also just use your direct selection tool. If you hover over corners, you'll get the double arrows, which means you can rotate. And you'll notice that as you start rotating an item, it will actually tell you how far you've rotated it. So we're going for 15 here, but I think 15 is actually a little much. So I'm going to do something just under 14. And here you can adjust the size. You can also adjust where this is located. So if it's um, not looking quite like the demonstration and the tutorial, this is where you can now move, move your notebook around or resize it a little bit. Um, after this point, it's going to become much harder to do so. So you should get your shape looking the way you want now. Once you have your shape the way you like, we're going to go ahead and give it a gradient. Um, this gradient is actually very similar to the one that we used on our original shapes. So you can go ahead and use the eyedropper tool as a quick shortcut to take the gradient uh, from the back. You have to have it selected. Um, and then you can exactly replicate that gradient. And now we can go into the gradient panel and just change the colors. So we want the lighter color here to be white. And we want the darker color to be a very light beige, which is F3DCCA. And that looks pretty good. Now we have the beginning of our notepad. 
Now we're going to start giving it some dimensionality. So we need to copy this item and paste it twice. We can do that a couple different ways. In this case, we're just going to go edit, copy, edit, paste, edit, paste. And there are two items here. I'm going to separate those um, just to make sure that we can see them both. And we want both of those new shapes to be the same uh, dark tan color. So I'm going to go ahead and double select both of them and on the color picker here I can type in what color I want them to be. That color is A8783F. Now we're going to go ahead and align one of them, the one up here, to our original notebook. And one easy way to do that is by selecting both of them by holding down shift and then using our align tools up here. Um, first I want it to go all the way left like the original shape and now I want it to line up to the top of the original shape and now it's in exactly the same place. This other one we want to get all the way off our artboard so I'm going to zoom out here. And we want to move this one so that it's just barely off the artboard. and you might need to zoom out to be able to get it in the right place. We're going to go ahead and use these to create a blend effect. So they're not going to stay as, in, as different shapes. We're going to be grouping them as a blend. So the first thing to do is we need to make this one in the bottom that's off our artboard have a zero opacity, which we can do in the transparency pane. So now it's still there, we just can't see it. So we're going to select that one and the opaque one and we're going to use the blend tool and one way to access that is up in the object blend and there are blend options as, as long, along with blend make so first we're going to check the options um, there are a couple things here I would recommend a specified steps of 50 to 80 probably I think 70 is going to work pretty well for us um, so I'm going to say OK that's not going to do anything it just set the settings and now we again have to go to object blend make to make our blend. That looks pretty nice but right now it's in front of our original notepad which we want it to be behind so we're going to go over to our layers pane over here and if we click down this is showing layers the same way they have in Photoshop and if we click on the little triangle we can actually see all the items that exist in this layer so far all the things we've created and we can see that our blend is at the very top and if you click its little triangle you can even see those original uh, shapes that we created and blended together. If we move that right below the top, this path comes to the forefront, that is our notepad, and now it is on top and we can see it clearly again. We're going to copy this one again. I'm going to zoom in so we can see it better. Edit, copy, edit. I'm going to go ahead and paste in place this time. And we want to move this just slightly up and to the left so that there's just a small edge over here and a slightly larger edge at the bottom. And now we're going to use our Shape Builder tool for the first time. This is an important one um, for this tutorial. So we're going to select both these shapes at once by holding down Shift. And now our Shape Builder tool is over here in our Tools. And when we have that selected, now we can see that places that are overlapping uh, are highlighted with this sort of dots pattern. We want to get rid of this piece at the very top. So by holding down Alt on Windows or Option on Mac, you get now this little minus sign. And if you click, it will delete only that piece where they intersect. Those two shapes are still exactly the same color, so we can't really tell them apart. We're going to go ahead and make that bottom shape a darker tan color, which we want to be DBB588. And now that shape has a little bit of dimensionality. Next we want to create the spiral for the notebook. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And we want to do this by using the rounded rectangle tool again. Now we might need to have a slightly smaller radius because we want to uh, make a much smaller shape. So we can try that out. I think that's going to work out alright. So now those settings are saved and I'm going to create a kind of knobby rounded rectangle that's going to become the spirals for our notebook. We're going to get one exactly the way we want and then we're going to copy it. So first we're going to change the 
the uh, gradient on this one. The gradient is still the same style as the notebook or the background, so we can go ahead and pick one to start out with a radial gradient, and then we can go to our gradient pane to adjust that. This one, we're going to have a, be a, a medium gray to sort of a darker gray. So that one is B6 A D A 6 for the lighter part of it. And then for the darker part, we want it to be 6 F 5 C 4 F. And now we have that gradient in place. The last thing we want to do with this is move it so the center of the gradient isn't at the center of the shape but toward the top. And to do that, we can keep this tool or this shape selected and then go to our gradient tool, which also has a shortcut of G. And when we select that, we now get this sort of option bar that can adjust the gradient. So if we put that at the top, now the center of that gradient goes to the top. We can also adjust the length of it so that we can adjust uh, how much the gradient disperses over the shape and you can adjust that until you get it the way you like. Once you have one of these the way you like, we're going to make a few copies. I'm going to do this by holding down um, Alt or Option, and I'm also going to hold down Shift to keep them evenly spaced. And I want this to spread about the width of the notebook, so I'm just going to eyeball that for now, and I'm going to select all of these and use our Distribute tool so that they spread out evenly. Now we need to put these up at the top of our notebook, and we want to rotate them the same amount. You could figure out exactly the same amount of rotation, but you can also eyeball it and get it pretty close. And adjust those so the tops are just kind of protruding above the top of your notebook and get it nice and evenly centered on your shape. Now we're going to go ahead and create some little t uh, holes for the notebook so it looks more realistic. We're going to use the ellipse tool to do that. And you can kind of just eyeball this for now, but you want it to sort of fit right around the bottom of your notebook spirals. And we want these to be a darker brown sh shade that kind of matches the shadow. So I'm just going to pick one that I think matches pretty well and we can always adjust it. One thing I'm going to do here is uh, group our spirals to make this next step a little bit easier. So we want to move the holes beneath the spirals. You can also select items from your um, layers panel by holding down shift and clicking on their little squares by where they exist. So I'm going to select those and I'm going to group them to make this easier to move the holes beneath them. So now our spirals exist in a group, and I'm going to move that group to the top so that they are on top of the holes we just created. And now you can further adjust those holes to make sure that they're lined up nicely with your spirals. When you have that the way you like, we have just one more piece that we need to do for our notepad. And to do that, we're going to select our main notebook shape again. We're going to copy that, edit, copy, edit, paste in place, and we're going to use the pen tool to create um, a little bit of a corner for this shape. So to do that we're going to draw a triangle that goes, cuts off this bottom corner. It doesn't have to be a very good triangle because we're just going to uh, delete that momentarily, but it does need to connect all the way up. So now we're going to select that triangle and our top layer notepad, and we're going to use our Shape Builder tool. Again, we're going to hold down Alt or Option to delete that piece that we no longer need. And that also separates this piece so that we can rotate it separately. Um, and I'm going to zoom in so we can see that more clearly. We want to rotate this piece so it flips the other direction. And also we want to line it up. And now we just need to adjust some of the colors to make that gradient more distinct. On this little piece, instead of having a radial gradient, we want it to have a linear gradient. And we probably want to swap that around so that the lighter edge is on the outside. 
We also want to adjust the gradient on the bottom. This is sort of the overturned page. And you can, if you're confused now about which things are which, you can see all the different pieces that are going on uh, with your different pieces here. So we actually want this page all the way at the bottom. Um, we're going to go ahead and make that gradient slightly darker. One way to do that is to select the part of the gradient and whenever you want to make a color slightly darker you can hold down shift and drag some of these little items a little bit farther over to do that. Uh, let's see. And we can also adjust that more later as well if it's not looking distinct enough. So we definitely need to move our spirals back to the top. We want to go ahead and move all of our holes back to the top, but below the spirals as well. And this is where, again, grouping content could be a good way to make this easier for yourself. And now we can see the upturned corner. We have our notebook holes, our spirals, and we're ready to move on to the next step. For the pencil, we're going to work a little way off the side of our main artboard so that we're not getting in the way of our other items. And we're going to start out by drawing a rectangle with the rectangle tool. And it doesn't matter exactly how big this is now because we can adjust it later, but try to get it about the same length uh, as your notebook. And we're going to go ahead and give that a teal color. 0, 0, A7, 9, D. And we want to make sure it has no stroke on the outside, so you can change the stroke to none if that was a problem. And now we need to be able to give it a point. And they suggest uh, one way of doing this is using the pen tool to create an inverse triangle shape that you can then subtract from this shape. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to start about where we want the point to be. And if you have your guides turned on, it's very easy to do this evenly because it will line it up for you. But you can also hold down shift to make sure you're drawing exactly straight lines. And now we, we have two shapes. We could use our shape builder tool come over here with by holding down either Alt or Option and delete these pieces. I'm going to go back. I have I think it's slightly easier to do that step after you've created the next part with the brown part on the pencil. So I'm going to undo that and save that shape for later. So we're still going to use that in a bit, but I want to do the bottom part of the pencil first. So now we need to create three overlapping and make these about half, half the length of this pencil. We're going to go ahead and give these sort of a tan, tan fill with different shades. So right now I'm just going to start out by making three that overlap just slightly. and giving them slightly different fills. So they want the one on the left to be light, the lightest. You can just go in and pick a slightly lighter shade. And the one over on the right to be the darkest. So we'll pick a slightly darker shade. And now we have a little bit of shading going on on our pencil. That one actually is a little too gray to me, so I'm going to adjust that slightly to make it a little warmer. Now we are going to go ahead and use the shape. We can use this all together so we can cut off both the brown parts and the green parts. Um, and we're going to go ahead now and select everything over here so far in our pencil shape and use the shape builder tool while holding down alt or option to delete all the pieces that we don't need.
Oops, we lost a piece there. All right. If you do that by accident as well, you can always just undo and then go back to your shape builder tool and start where you were off, where you left off. All right. Once we have all the little pieces hidden, now we have our pencil. And I'm going to go ahead and bring the center piece to the front just so that it is the widest one in the middle. You don't have to do that, but I think it looks a little nicer. Now we want to be able to create the scalloped edge, so instead of having a straight edge across, and I'm going to zoom in pretty far for this because this is a sort of complicated, complicated thing. So we want to be able to create a scallop shape that's going to cut off the parts of this brown. And it's recommended to use the pen tool. Um, I'm going to show you another way to do this as well. So with the pen tool, you can make points, and if you hold down and drag at any point, you can actually create a curved line. So then if you alternate between a not curved and just by clicking and then clicking and dragging you get a curved line then you can create a scallop shape that goes across your whole shape you can just sort of drag it up here this part of the shape doesn't matter it's just about completing the shape so you can use it to intersect things another way you could do this is by uh, creating this shape using circles I'm just going to show you how to do that real quick as well So here you're going to want circles that are slightly wider than your shapes here. That's pretty good. We're going to duplicate those so that they overlap just slightly. We're going to move these over here. And now we're going to use our Shape Builder tool in a different way. So this is the way that you can actually combine shapes. If you don't hold down anything and you just drag across these, it will actually combine it into one shape. And now you can go ahead and use a rectangle tool with these, select this, and now you can use your shape builder tool again, this time doing the subtraction, and now you have a scallop shape that way as well. I'm going to go ahead and use the scallop shape that's already here. We're going to highlight all the pieces we need, go to our shape builder tool, and use an Alt or Option, we're going to delete all the small pieces that we don't need. Again, if you do it a little too much, let's zoom in so we can get all those small pieces. You can always undo. If you're holding down Alt or Option to delete, make sure you hold it down all the way. Otherwise, that's what's happening to me here. I am not holding it down quite long enough. My computer's taking a little while to respond, and it's switching instead to combining them, which is not what we want. This is probably the hardest part of this entire tutorial. And once you have that completed, um, you will have that nice scallop shape showing with your pencil. We don't need this one anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. The next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of eraser to the top of this pencil. And if you find that your proportions don't feel right to you, you can always adjust the edges of your uh, different shapes using the direct selection tool. So I'm going to go ahead and make this pencil shape slightly taller by selecting both the top anchor points 
and just using my arrow key to make that slightly longer. We're going to go ahead and add an eraser using the rectangle tool. And in this case, if you're using CS or Adobe CC, you can use the rectangle tool and then draw in the corners to give them a rounded effect. I don't have that option since I'm working in CS6, so I'm going to do the rounded uh, the effect stylize round corners. That's a little much. And then I'm going to fill out the rest of this by combining a shape. As you can see, there are a lot of different ways to combine shapes. And that is a major building block of Illustrator. Ah, if I'm doing the rounded rectangles, I first have to go to Object, Expand Appearance to give those edges. Make them permanent. If you have CC, you can just drag in the corners and that step will be a lot easier. So we're going to go ahead and give this a three-tone gradient. So over in our gradient panel, we can pick any default gradient. We're going to want to make sure it's linear. And we're going to go ahead and do three colors. So the first one is a medium red. We'll just pick something that's fairly close and then go back and adjust it in the hex code. FD393E. And to do three colors, this one needs to have three, we can actually just drag this gradient slider while holding down Alt or Option to create a third, a third step on this gradient. And the second in-between one is going to be FF706A, a little light pink, and then we'll do one more that's a little bit darker. Again, we'll pick something similar so that we can choose a hex code. FD 393E. And now we have our completed eraser. So the next thing we're going to do is create the, the three rectangles to be the metal connector between the pencil and the eraser. I'm just going to have these kind of sit right below the eraser here. And when I draw them by default, they're going to be filled with the same gradient. So I'm actually going to switch this one immediately. We want these to have exactly the same fill as the spirals on our notebook. So using the eyedropper with this selected, I can go over and choose that. And now I have that exact same gradient applied to this portion of the pencil. I'm duplicating them by holding down Alt or Option while dragging. And now I have three metal pencil pieces. The only thing left to adjust here is that I want to have their gradients. Um, we'll zoom in so we can see this more clearly. I want to have their gradients centered over on the side so that when we rotate this pencil it'll look like the light is shining from one particular area. So we're going to use the gradient. Once they're highlighted we're going to use the gradient tool and move these pieces up. I'm also just going to drag these out a little bit so it's a little bit more of a gentle gradient. You probably want all three pieces to have the same type of gradient or it's, the light is going to look uneven. Now if we zoom back out, we can see that looks pretty good. Now we need to draw some different colored panels on the, on the pencil. Those should line up with our panels that are underneath, and we really only need to do two of them because we want to have one on the outside and one on the inside 
that will match up with a different shade. So we're going to make the light green, or the light teal is going to be 1, 4, C, 9, B, 8, and the dark one is going to be 0, 5, 7, F, 7, 3, and we want to get those behind these the brown pieces. So we're going to select the brown pieces. We could also do this over in our layers panel. Go to object, arrange, bring to front. One of the last things we need to do on our pencil is give it the lead. So we're going to use the ellipse tool. And we're going to draw a pretty large circle. By holding down shift, you can get a perfect circle. And we're going to center that so that it overlaps the bottom of our pencil. And we're also going to give that the same gradient that we gave to the metal parts of our pencil and our spirals over here. And we're going to use the Shape Builder tool in the same way to delete the piece that we don't need. And you may need to adjust the gradient on that piece as well so that it looks more like a gentle pencil lead and not, uh, not super shiny. Now we just have a few last steps to complete our icon and get all the pieces together. So first, to get our pencil over onto our icon, we're going to select all of it um, by dragging around it or by clicking on the individual pieces and go to uh, Object Group. By grouping it, we have a little bit more control over dragging it all together instead of having to, to worry about the individual pieces coming apart. So we're going to bring it over to our icon and we're going to rotate it. There's not a specific rotation that you want to do. 45 degrees is pretty close, so if you hold down shift while you rotate, you can get a nice 45 degree rotation. Um, you might want it a little bit more or a little bit less than that. And we want to add a drop shadow now to this pencil by going to Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. And this is the mode we want. We want it to be Multiply, and opacity is often 75 by default, but we want it to be 45. We want both offsets to be 7. We want the blur to be 7. And a really critical part is that we want the color often defaults to black, and we want it to be this nice brown instead. 3F1606. And we can preview that to see how it looks. You can see that nice shadow appear along the edge of the pencil. And when that looks correct, you can say OK. At this point, if your pencil is not quite the right size or isn't in the right place, you can still go ahead and, and change it. You can rotate it. You can change the scale um, by holding down one of the corners and uh, holding down shift as you scale it. Um, make sure that you now have the pencil exactly the way you want it because we're moving on to the check mark. So one of the last objects we need to add to this is a check mark, and we're going to start that by creating a green triangle. We'll add the fill in a minute. First we need to create this, um, not triangle, rectangle, and we want to rotate this to 45 degrees. So if you hold down shift, you can rotate it to exactly 45 degrees. We want to copy that shape, object, or edit, copy, edit, paste, and this one we want to have sh uh, rotated the other way, so we can just hold down shift and rotate it to 45 degrees and make sure that those are overlapping so that they're going to create a nice check mark, check mark. Now if we select both of them, we can go back to our Shape Builder tool like we've used before. If we hold down Alt or Option, we can delete those pieces. And now if we drag around everything with the Shape Builder tool, we can also create one unified shape out of the remaining rectangles. So you want to do that until everything has the same outside boundaries. Now we're going to go ahead and give this check mark a uh, color. We want to give it a gradient. We want that gradient to be a radial gradient. And we want it to be from a, a one shade of lime green to another shade of lime green. So we're going to go ahead and pick something close and then give it the exact color. E5, F034 for the first one. It's pretty lemony lemony green. Um, and then for the second one, we want it to be B, D, D, 7, 3, 4. So now we have this nice electric lime green 
check mark. And we want to copy and paste this to give it a little bit of a shadow as well. So edit, copy, edit, we'll paste in place this time. And we just want to offset that a little bit and send that new one to the back. Or actually, we'll bring the, the original one to the front. The back one, we want to give a little bit of a different color. We want to give that more of a spring green color. And we'll pick 9 DC B34. So that creates just a little bit of texture there. We can go ahead and bring this shape over. We want to group it eventually, but first we want to create a shadow. So we're going to bring this over to where it belongs, sort of underneath our notebook, kind of hooked under the corner. And you may need to rotate it a little bit more to get it, get it the way you want and what looks good with your composition. Now we're going to give it a shadow the same way we gave the notebook a shadow way back at the very beginning of this. So we want to pick the top check mark and we want to edit, copy, edit paste, and paste again so that we have two copies of that. And like before, um, I'm going to separate those so we can see them and we want them to be a slightly more of a brown color since they're going to be shadows. So we can just pick those. Um, and this one needs to line up with the original one, so we're going to go ahead and align those. And this other one we want to have off our artboard. You want it to follow so it's going to follow kind of the same, you want the shadows to look like they're coming from the same light source. So you want to put this kind of proportional to where the you put the notebook shape for the notebook. And if you can see your notebook shape, you could even align them that way. If you can kind of see where that is, you can sort of get them lined up in that way. Now we need to change the opacity of this one to zero, because that's how we're going to create the blend effect. And we're going to select both of those, go up to Object, Blend, Make. And that one seemed to have a little bit of a strange, strange effect going on. So I'm going to go over to my Appearance pane and well, I might just undo this one actually and try again going to blend and blend options and see if maybe we can do some more steps so it didn't look so jagged. That still looks a little jagged. You could try adding some more steps if you want. I'm also going to lower the opacity on the entire blend item uh, so it doesn't look quite as dramatic. And now in our layers, we want to find our check marks and bring those to the top so that they stand out. You may want to group all of your items, both the check marks and the blend. because that way you can move them around and they'll move as a group instead of having to move each piece individually. You could also make them bigger if you felt like it wasn't filling enough of your composition. Now we're ready to complete our final icon. So once our shadows look good, we want to make sure all the pieces within our icon look good because now we're going to sort of group them all together. So we want to use this rounded rectangle shape that we created at the very beginning for our, for our base piece um, in order to give some nice sharp edges and then a little dimensions to the icon overall. Since I use the rounded rectangle or the rounded corners effect, I'm first going to go up to object and expand appearance. If you used one of the other techniques, like dragging in the corners, you will not have to do that step. At this point, we want to group everything other than that background piece. And now we can see it in our, layer, in our layers panel. We have the group that has everything, plus then our one piece that we've used for our icon background. And we're going to copy that edit, copy, edit. We're going to do paste in place. Now 
Now we're going to select everything. Right now we can't see anything, but see all these little pieces around the edges that we don't really want? That's what we want to get rid of. So we've used this piece and we're going to create a layer mask by now selecting everything. Which you can go up to edit, select all, or you can also do control A. And what we want to do is create a, la a mask with that top piece. Since it's on top, it's going to do that automatically. The shortcut for creating a clipping mask is control 7. You can also go to object, clipping mask, make. And what that does is it doesn't delete those pieces. They still exist, but it has hidden all those little pieces around the edges from view so that we now have everything back to this nice rounded uh, square shape that we'll use for our icon. The last thing we want to do is add a little bit of uh, dimension to our, our icon using the direct selection tool so we can select that background even though it's part of this layer mask now we can say uh, edit copy edit paste and we still have that item we can move that to the back so that it's behind the rest of our clipping mask then we can adjust it I'm just going to adjust it using arrows because we only want it offset a little bit from our main icon and that item we're going to give a dark brown fill we'll just pick one actually, how about something like something like that, maybe a little lighter you can see what looks best with your icon, what looks subtle but also realistic and once you have that background layer in place you have completed your to-do icon.